Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are treading off the beaten path and talking about a disease that's affecting everyone's favourite games, microtransactions. So after the recent Battlefront fiasco, I figured it's finally time for me to destroy these pesky little bastards harder than the Flood destroyed the Foreigner Empire. So let's start by talking about why these things are degrading gaming so much. At the heart of gaming used to be meritocracy, the idea that you're rewarded purely on the basis of your talent and achievements. This was apparent in titles like Halo 3, where you were rewarded with armour, the only unlocks in the game, by earning achievements. This not only made the unlocks satisfying to earn, but also added a level of value to them. So, for example, if you saw somebody with security and katana, you know they worked hard to get it and that they truly earned it. Although Reach wasn't exactly a meritocracy, locking certain armour pieces behind high levels retained that sense of value. If you saw somebody with inclement weather and haunted, you knew they were at the very least a dedicated player. But with the introduction of microtransactions, this is now a moot point. Meritocratic unlock systems have been entirely replaced by randomised loot boxes, where each box you open has X percent of a chance of giving you a certain armour piece. This means that every single player, dedicated or not interested in the game, skilled or unskilled, all have the exact same chance of earning that one little unlock that you really want, removing any level of value tied to that item, because every person in the game is as likely as the next to get it, and this applies to any form of unlock, be it cosmetics or super powerful overpowered weapons. The value of previously meritocratically unlocked items in video games has now been watered down to a case of who is the luckiest at spinning the slot machine, or who has the biggest bank account. In its worst cases, this leads to pay-to-win games, where more skilled players are put at an inherent disadvantage compared to less skilled players, who just happen to spend more money on microtransactions. Battlefront 2 was a case of this, where if you got lucky, or of course just happened to spend $300 on loot crates, you could get a star card giving you literal invincibility while mid-air as Boba Fett, a character known for his goddamn jetpack. Microtransactions have eroded value of unlockable items in the meritocratic systems they've replaced. Even when there's no randomness involved, pay to skip still poses the same issues, and they're issues that can't be resolved. The cool items have to be in the loot crates to incentivize people to buy them, so all the previously high value items are all but devalued now, which really waters down modern games unlocks and the previous satisfaction that was tied to them. So, now we've covered why microtransactions, RNG loot crates specifically, are so detrimental to games, let's look at just how anti-consumer they really are. They used to be used as a way for developers to make money off free-to-play games, which in my opinion is perfectly fair. The games don't have a financial barrier to entry. Well, now the freemium system, as it's known, is being literally copy and pasted into $60 full price games, and if that wasn't bad enough, the content locked behind the microtransactions is stuff that should already be in the game as an unlockable, like weapons, armour, camos, characters, etc. Like I said before, entire progression based unlock systems are being reworked to solely focus around monetization over player satisfaction, and to make matters even worse, Publishers are even starting to work microtransactions into single-player games. Shadow of War right now is the biggest example, along with Assassin's Creed Origins. It doesn't seem like much right now, granted, but a few years ago, microtransactions in multiplayer games were barely a thing, and look where we are now. I guarantee if people let this slide in a few years, every single campaign will be infected with this disease. Arguably the most anti-consumer and disgusting thing that I've seen to come out of these things so far is Activision filing patents for matchmaking systems that throw aside matching you with people of your skill level or of your rank or to make the game fair, instead the systems they patented match you with people of a higher skill, who have weapons only found in loot crates. So they destroy you and then coerce you into buying loot crates and hoping that you get the same overpowered weapon. This is honestly the most disgusting thing that I think I've ever read. If you want to read more about this, the links are in the description, but it's without a doubt the scummiest thing I've seen, and it proves that skill and balance are 
without a doubt, being eroded in favour of intrusive monetization. In my opinion, what's worst about all of this is how these systems actively prey on young audiences and those with addictive tendencies. They design the loot crates in such a way that makes them psychologically addictive to open with fanfares and positively reinforcing sounds when you get something good. Now, not only is this shady, it's extremely unethical in my opinion. Those responsible for adding these know exactly what they're doing and who they're going to rope in and exploit for more revenue. And they don't care. They do it anyway. These systems are not made for the consumer. They are 100% made with generating excess revenue for investors in mind. Never forget that. Whenever anyone tries to argue to you that they're built for the player, they're straight up not telling the truth. Locking items previously attainable through achievements and challenges behind random paywalls is not for the players. Moving on, what sleazy tricks are employed to make you buy more of these bastards? Something they like to do is allow you to buy preset amounts of the currency you exchange real life money for. Then they price what you can buy with that currency just out of range of the amount that you can buy. So for example, League of Legends, albeit a free to play game, has standard skin prices set at 970 RP, and RP for the record is the real money currency. The lowest amount of RP you can buy is 790 for five pounds, so you have to buy more than you need, 10 pounds worth to buy the skin, but then you don't have enough money left over to buy another one with the excess, and thus the cycle repeats. Other full price games like Call of Duty do this too, and it's extremely shady. They make you buy more than you need, but then you don't have enough left over to buy any more, so you have to buy more. It's extremely manipulative. Arguably even shadier is locking key content behind paywalls, like in the case of Battlefront 2. Like, who the fuck at EA thought that it would be a wise idea to lock Luke and Vader, literally the two most well-known and important Star Wars characters, behind a paywall, or of course an artificial 40 hour grind. The worst thing about this is that you couldn't even straight up buy them for money if you wanted to. You had to get lucky with getting credits from loot crates, which even further encouraged you to buy more of them. Of course this since has been changed by EA, but let's not make any mistakes here. If there was no uproar about this, they wouldn't have changed a damn thing. Shame. 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 This artificial grind that Battlefront suffered from is another problem. The grind to unlock content, whether it's content unlocked through loot boxes or earning a currency by winning, is now artificially elongated to incentivize people to pay to skip and buy loot boxes with real life money instead of having to earn it. One of the ways they like to do this is by stagnating the loot pool with pointless fluff, like fuck knows how many sprays in Overwatch or pointless armor skins in Halo 5. And some games even have the gall to give you duplicates, giving you an insulting amount of currency back when you get them. If I can give one thing to Halo 5's rec system, it's that they didn't include duplicates. That's the one thing I'll give it. And when it comes to buying the loot crates, they try and encourage you to buy certain bundles. The highest price bundle is all always the best value because they say that they give you more of the currency or loot crates for free and then the one around the median is always the top seller to try and get you to go with the crowd. All in all they are extremely manipulative and shady in their practices to try and make you spend more money and it's a real fucking kick in the teeth when you've just spent $60 on the game itself. So. How do we fix it? Well, if they absolutely have to stay, if they have to, then follow Titanfall 2 system. Purely cosmetic, where you can straight up purchase a skin or whatever without any RNG or loot box bullshit, and then also still have many cosmetics in the game still to earn. If they absolutely have to be a thing, then please follow this system because it's the absolute least shitty system out there. Or alternatively, follow the path of CD Projekt Red with Witcher 3 and also other games too. Release genuinely good, fresh DLC expansions packed full with new interesting content that appeals to many different groups of fans. Halo Wars 2's Awakening the Nightmare was a great example of this too, along with some older things like Shivering Isles. If you make good, fresh content that adds a new take to a game that people already like, people will buy it, no doubt. The problem with DLC is 
when it stops being extra content and then starts being purposefully cut content, which is a new problem entirely, and it's one that one game in particular is still employing. So, these are my thoughts on the whole microtransaction fuckfest. I've been wanting to make a video on the entire thing for quite a while, and I honestly don't know why it took me so long, but after that whole Battlefront 2 controversy, that really pushed me over the edge. I felt like after that, I really had to give my two cents on why they're so bad. This shit has got to stop. If you want to see more sort of general gaming videos like this from me in the future, then don't forget to leave a like down below and also show your support in the comments and stuff. I would really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.